Described as Mad Max meets BMX, 2015's Turbo Kid is set in a post-apocalyptic world in 1997. Yeah, little, little bizarre. The movie's a little bizarre. Nay, it's a lot bizarre. We're going to talk about it today quickly on Adam Does Movies. This movie request comes from Gregory Coburn over on patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. He signed up at the Mithril level, so he gets to recommend a movie for me to watch. I give him a shout out and I do the review. You can do the same exact thing if you want. You can also become a member on YouTube via the join button and do the exact same thing. It's a good time for both parties, especially if the film is great. In this case, not quite for me. But I'm going to talk about it, I'm going to lay it out, and it might be something that appeals to you more. Like I said in the opening, this movie takes place in 1997, but the film was made in 2015. So we have a post-apocalyptic world set in a different universe, I guess. It's, it's kind of clever because it gets to play off 90s stuff a lot. We love that nostalgia. We love some of that retro music. This film's full of both. We have synth wave like crazy in this, which makes sense. It was all the rage when this came out. We're talking Stranger Things with that boom, 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 boom. It's all, it's all over this thing. I did enjoy this movie. I didn't love it by any means. I thought it was interesting and different and so therefore pretty cool. On the other hand, which in this case is this one, I have a hard time recommending this to a lot of people because I'm a movie guy. I see a lot of stuff really great, really bad, somewhere in between. This is somewhere in between for me. But I appreciate things that are different and stand on their own, and this absolutely does. However, most of my friends, relatives, they only see a few films a year. They're not looking for Turbo Kid, I can tell you that. They would watch five minutes of this and say, wow, this is horrible, how dare you, sir? But people that watch my channel usually are into movies, and in that sense, I would say, tread lightly on Turbo Kid if you're looking for something new. I would say Mad Max meets BMX is kind of fair since it is desert, it is post-apocalyptic, there is a lot of violence, it's pretty graphic, actually it's, it's really graphic, and they are on literal bicycles. They're not driving vehicles in this thing. There's some futuristic tech though that we didn't have in the 90s, so it's very much a sci-fi fantasy version of what you and I are familiar with if you were even born in the 90s. That's sad to think that there's people that weren't. Monroe Chambers plays the kid. That's his name in this movie. He has no actual name. We're going to be following him for the majority of this picture as he's just trying to make his way through a bad situation. Doesn't have any family to speak of. He's been on his own, collecting trinkets, trading, bartering. This is kind of like Waterworld in reverse. Desert world. People's value is water. They need it to survive. Since it is post-apocalyptic, a lot of this area is covered by really bad individuals. And the leader is Zeus. Schlockily played by Michael Ironside. I like Michael Ironside because he's always giving a bit of a schlocky performance. It's intentional. It's over the top. I'm here for it. His right-hand man is Skeletron, played by Edwin Wright. Oh, right-hand man. Edwin Wright. That makes sense. That works. Skeletron's a cool name and he's a cool villain. He's always wearing a mask, looks like a badass, can take a lot of hits. The reason this is called Turbo Kid is because the kid really looks up to this hero. He's a big fan of the comic books. He's got some of the action figures. This is a, a character that I guess at one point existed, at least in some form of reality to this boy. And as the movie progresses, he's going to stumble upon some of the tools of the trade. And he's even gonna get a power glove he can shoot bursts of energy out of. The power glove. It's so bad. We can't have a main protagonist though without a sidekick. And in this case, it's Apple. She's a quirky one. She kind of reminded me of a young I Justine. Anybody remember I Justine? Wait a second. I Justine, Apple, she's an Apple shill. Oh my God, it's all coming together. Did, did they see her and try to find an actress who looked like her? Ah! Probably not. Just a coincidence. I guess you could say this is a little bit of a coming of age story, kind of, but not really. I guess it's a little bit of a romance, kind of, but not really. I guess it's kind of a horror, thriller, action, adventure, kind of, but not really. It's a lot of stuff. A little half-baked into one. It's bizarre because the tone of the movie is playful, it's energetic, it's got the retro tips of the hats going for it. But then it's also very violent 
very crass. There's some really gross sections. The biggest one I will point out is one of the heroes gets kidnapped and they tie his intestines to the end of a bicycle. And to get information out of him, he has one of his henchmen slowly turn the wheel so the intestines pulling out. It's disgusting. It's terrifier level of stuff. That's what this is more like. This is more like Mad Max meets Terrifier. From a visual and effects standpoint, this is definitely lower on the budget scale, but it looks pretty solid. Lots of great practical effects on display, heads on pikes, people getting stuff ripped off, limbs, blood, guts, shit, piss, going all over the place. It's when it focuses on CG that things get really, really iffy, like really campy. And I know that's kind of part of the charm and there is an attention to it. Definitely not trying to make state-of-the-art effects here, but it's, it's just a little off. Everything feels a little off. I will say though, Turbo Kid kept my attention. I appreciated it standing out and being different, being a unique storyline, and for all those reasons and more. Thank you, Gregory Coburn, for this recommendation to watch Turbo Kid, and mainly for being a Patreon supporter. Becoming a member on Patreon, even at the $1 tier, does a lot to help the channel out. I'm a one-man show. It's a passion project. I have a full-time job, so this is really a lot of work to put in. And any support I can get is, is very appreciated. Thanks again, Gregory, and to all Patreon members and YouTube Join members. And let me know in the comments below. Have you seen Turbo Kid? What are your thoughts? You like it? You love it? You don't want any of it? And speaking of like, feel free to give me one, along with the subscription if you somehow randomly showed up here. I can't imagine a single person was recommended this video, but if you're one of those people, let me know in the comments, subscribe, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.